Rebuilding a model steam plant. This is part 33. Completing the piping of the hand pump to the check valve. Now it is time to work on the inlet piping to the pump. In the next video I will be showing how to make a steam turret to connect the steam engines to the boiler. I do like the look of the PM Research components for piping like you see here. But I do not want to go over the top like this plant was originally built, using this modular PM Research piping everywhere. In my opinion, the original plant looked like the opening credits to an episode of Monty Python's Flying Circus, with rather pointless piping everywhere. With the exception of this piping to the pump, I'm going to try and simplify the overall piping to make it look more aesthetically pleasing. In the last episode, I bent this piece of pipe to fit the check valve, and now I've marked off the length of it at the pump end, and here I'm withdrawing it from underneath the boiler. This part of the job worked out not to be quite as simple as I thought it was going to be, because this pipe is very close to the gas burner. I had to manoeuvre it to clear the burner as I withdrew it. I'm not going to show the silver soldering operation, there are plenty of silver soldering videos already on my channel. Here's the part, after I silver soldered union cones on both ends, you will notice that I did remember to fit the union nuts. This clip was recorded as I was about to clean up the end of the pipe. When I pushed this pipe back through the underside of the boiler, the union nut at the pump end refused to come through with the pipe. There is a simple solution and here it is. I'm fitting a nylon cable tie to the pipe to hold the nut close to the end of the pipe. A simple solution to a simple problem. Obviously I did pull the cable tie very tight onto the pipe and then I snipped off the end with a pair of cutters. Recently I bought a box full of side cutters, but to my surprise at the time of doing this job I could not find any of them. I have many bad habits and one of the worst ones is putting things in a safe place. I ended up in this instance cutting off the end of the cable tie using a small pair of standard side cutters. You may notice from this clip that before completing the job I cleaned up the pipe a little bit more and now it's fairly shiny. That's the outlet side of the pump complete, now I just need to create the inlet piping. First of all I need a thread adapter to take the thread down to quarter by 40 threads per inch. After a bit of rummaging about I found one in a box of PM Research fittings that I have. I figured out that at this side I needed to use one of my double-ended steam union connectors. It was just the right length to position a pair of PM Research elbows exactly where I needed them to be. In this clip I'm re-threading a PM Research elbow. I do a lot of this because I've mentioned before the thread forms between the UK and the USA for quarter by 40 are different. I did this part of the job wrong. My brain said to me, fit the thread adapter first, then fit the elbow onto the thread adapter, but then I realised that owing to the close proximity of the baseboard, this was going to be difficult. Before fitting the thread adapter into the pump, I put it in the chuck of my Boxford lathe, and then, using a spanner, I tightly screwed an elbow onto the end of it. The three chuck jaws didn't mark the hexagon part of the adapter. And now, with the elbow fitted to the thread adapter, I screwed a double union into the end of the elbow that I've just re-threaded. And as usual, as I frequently mention and frequently show, I'm applying some Loctite 542 to the threads before tightening them. I found that the spanner that I was using was slightly too big for the hexagon on the steam union. So instead, I used my Barco spanner on the second elbow to tighten the entire assembly in place. And yes, I re-threaded one end of the elbow as usual to fit on my steam union. When this is finished, it's going to look quite good. The next part of the job requires a long PM Research fitting. No more re-threading required because PM Research brass tubing fits into PM Research fittings. I coated one end of this threaded brass tube with Loctite 542 and on this end I temporarily fitted a steam union, that way I could use a spanner to tighten the tube in place. To remove the union nut on the end I used a pair of pliers with a very gentle pattern on the jaws to support the pipe while I undid the union nut. Now it's time for a bit of thought. 
What you're looking at is right at the back of the plant. The plant is the wrong way round to the way it would normally be. What I'm doing here is using a PM Research collar to join two pieces of tube, but in my opinion this doesn't look too good. But the main reason for having a rethink is the water tank, which sits on top of a latticework of wood, is just a plastic tub, and the piping is fastened to this tub using epoxy resin on the inside. Here I'm marking the position where I would have to cut the pipe, so I think instead of doing this, I'm going to use a flexible connection. Instead of joining two pieces of pipe, I'm just going to use one piece of pipe with a support down onto the baseboard at the end of the piece of brass tubing. More about this in a future episode. For the moment, I'm having a think about the different aspects of this job. Already, I've definitely decided I am not going to use this second piece of pipe. On the baseboard at the moment are two pieces of brass. One is a piece of brass hexagon that someone made into a turret and that looks horrendous. I will not be making the turret this way. Instead, I'm going to cut this piece of brass bar and make the turret out of this. Making the turret will be an episode all by itself. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.